I will never forget New Year's Day 2020, the day I signed up for my first 100 mile race. Guys, I'm Holly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I bring you the video that I wish I had that day that I signed up for the race. I am going to cover everything you possibly could think of related to being ready for your first 100 mile run. I will cover all the physical aspects, all the mental aspects, tell you, are you ready to do this thing? Do you have the confidence, guts, the willpower to get through it? Are you physically capable of doing so? If you guys have watched my other 100 mile videos, you know how much work goes into preparing for a race this size. That being said though, it's absolutely possible to train for 100 miles and keep your real life going too. You don't need to sacrifice and put everything to the wayside in order to finish this thing. So, so much of it is mental. On that note, you guys, I do not wanna scare you with the details I'll be sharing in this video. I'm just being real with you, and more than anything, I'm hoping to get you excited about how big of a challenge this is, because it means that's how rewarding it will feel to finish. The strength of the mind that is required to finish 100 miles is what I believe to be the great equalizer of this distance. You don't need to be a Boston qualifier to finish. You need to be someone who has grit, who can push through the absolute lowest of lows and not get too overly confident in the highest of highs. The longest I ever ran prior to 100 miles was 50 miles and I did that twice, two different 50 mile races. So for anyone watching this who's already in that ultra marathon world, but curious if they're able to make that jump up to 100, definitely stick to the end of this video. My last section will be a side-by-side -side list of what was the most different between 50 and 100 miles. So you can really wrap your head around if you're ready to make the leap. We're gonna start here with how to know if you're physically ready to do 100 miles. But before that, I wanna remind you guys, I do have a Patreon channel now linked in the description. Two new follow along workouts for you every single month, one run, one strength. They're really good, no ads in there. And also in the top tier of the Patreon membership, you can have access to two live Q and A's every single month. Ask me anything for 30 minutes. I cover any topic you want. It's been really fun so far, so highly encourage you guys to check that out. Now, physically getting ready, the biggest thing you need to do is test it out. You have to experience what it's like to move when you're really tired, really sore, and really in pain. For someone brand new to fitness who has it on their bucket list to run 100 miles in, say, the next two years, here's what I recommend. Four races at least under your belt before attempting 100 miles. Two of those can be marathon distance or shorter. Two of those should definitely be in the ultra marathon department. One of those ultra marathon races should definitely be at least 50 miles, if not 100K, 62-ish miles. If you are a beginner and this is one of your major goals, I wanna tell you right now to start conservatively with your training. Lose the weight at a rate that's safe for you, approved by your doctor, and don't come out too hot because what happens then is you build habits that you can't hold on to. You wanna build a sustainable system that's going to last you months and months without injury to get you all the way through those races and that longer distance to eventually get you to 100 miles. For those of you guys who already have a fitness routine, I'm gonna break you into two categories. The first category will be those of you who work out but don't necessarily run. I want you guys to do at least two races before attempting 100 miles. One of the races should be at least marathon distance, the other should be at least 50 miles, as I said. What this will do is give you the groundwork, show you how to run train, how to run multiple times a week, still incorporating your other workouts and your strength training, the mobility of it all, keeping those injuries at bay as you work up to longer distance. This will teach you a lot about that. Additionally, having the practice on two different days of hydrating, fueling, working through cramps, the hot, the cold conditions, all that stuff comes up as different factors on race day and until you've experienced it, you really can't prepare. The other category of you guys, you work out and you already distance run, as I said earlier in this video, just get at least one 50 mile or more in before 100 miles. Again, that's a very different experience than even the marathon, showing you what you're gonna experience as far as the highs and lows. 100 miles is gonna be a lot more intense, but 50 miles will at least show you what it's like to be out there all day. 
I'm now gonna break down a list for you guys of what to physically expect during 100 miles. Again, I wish so badly that I had had a video that said all this stuff before I went and tried it, so here you go. First things first, you are gonna be experiencing pain like you've never experienced it before. I'm not talking about how bad something hurts, I'm talking about the fact that you're bringing that naggy, achy swelling with you every step of the way. It's going to get progressively a little bit worse till you're finished with the race. So a big part of the physicality of 100 miles is making the adjustments to get through anyway. That means taking that next step forward when you absolutely don't think you can. A lot of you guys are gonna deal with nausea, dizziness, not being able to stomach your food when you need to eat it. I really ran into this issue at mile 80 and I'm someone who never deals with gut issues ever. I simply didn't think I could swallow another bite of food. I was so upset in my stomach, so tired from being awake, everything jostling around, moving for so long that I just didn't feel like I could do it. And then I remembered, you cannot drive the car without gas in the tank, so you have to do it anyway. These will be things you experience, but you can get through it. You're also gonna experience really swollen feet, really swollen ankles that feel super, super stiff. You're gonna experience what that feels like in your shoes when the laces feel too tight that you have to continue to loosen them. Those daily chronic pains that we deal with that usually don't inhibit us from keeping on with our day, those get put under the magnifying glass during 100 miles. That little hip twinge, that big toe that throbs you know, at two in the afternoon every day, those things get blown up. Those are gonna feel way worse for way longer during 100 miles. Last thing I wanna say about physical discomfort, guys, is in the way of irregular bowel movements and dizziness or disorientation. These are real factors that come into play. This is because we're running for so long that eventually we will experience a little bit of dehydration even when we're really on top of our water and electrolytes. When this happens, we can experience a little diarrhea or maybe going to the bathroom when we weren't expecting it. These things are very natural, they happen. A lot of times we lose some core control because we're so exhausted from moving. Expect that. On the dizziness disorientation side, you guys might be running in the middle of the night or the early morning for hours at a time with a headlamp. That means that little up down of the light could lead to a little dizziness or really not knowing where you are. So it's important to see that coming now. I know a lot of you guys are watching this right now like, okay, that was really negative and not inspiring and now we don't even wanna sign up. Totally get it, but keep watching because here is the list of things I did to prepare myself to be physically ready to go against any of those factors that came in. I told you about them because they're real and they could come up, but it doesn't mean you're not strong enough to combat them and train against them to start. Now I'll share my perfect formula that I really have seen work for so many different distance races, especially the 100. Running three days a week. One of these runs should be your distance run. The one that increases in time, in mileage, as the weeks go on. As you get into that three month period leading up to the race, you should be spending at least three to four hours on this long run. You don't need to be running the whole time, but you need to be moving the whole time. This gets your body ready and prepared to move when you're tired. The other runs could be tempo where you're working on speed, hills where you're working on that endurance, that heavier breathing as you climb, getting some downhill work in. You could even throw a run in that's just for fun, just kind of to clear the mind. You also need to be getting in at least two strength workouts a week. I swear by this, these strength workouts give you the armor, the defense against the really, really excruciating pain of an ultra marathon. When it comes to these strength workouts, do something you know you're gonna show up for repeatedly, so you need to like it. Could be a hit class, could be CrossFit, you could go in the gym and make up your own, but you wanna make sure you're working the full body and you're at least getting under a little bit of weight, maybe for some back squats or deadlifts. This is gonna really help strengthen and armor up the hips, glutes, quads, and your knees. We really, really need to protect these things to get us through the whole race. Additionally, you wanna be targeting the core to protect your back. That low back pain we get when we're climbing up a long hill, really, really mitigated when we have that strong core working for us. And again, the core helps protect the hips, especially for women. We want all that working for us during the two strength workouts a week. The last thing I swear by in physical preparation for the 100 miler is to do things when you're tired. Do hard things when you're tired. This could be as simple as forcing yourself out the door for a 20 minute run at midnight. This could be as simple as setting the 4 a.m. alarm to get out the door and do 30 minutes of hill repeats. It could be as simple as going upstairs with your groceries, keep holding on, go back down and back up one more time. 
These things suck, they don't feel good, but watching yourself do those types of things even once a week will give you a whole bank of memories to look back on in the low moments of the race. You want to practice being uncomfortable and I can't stress it enough, doing the physically tough thing when you don't want to is gonna be the key to finishing. Now guys, the whole reason I told you to get a couple races under your belt before attempting 100 miles is so that you can experience both doing the training tips I just gave you with how they actually apply on race day. You will see how things translate. For a lot of you, you might need to modify things that I gave you here today. Maybe the structure is there, but the numbers need to be tweaked. This is my favorite section of the video. It is where I'm gonna break down everything I did to make sure I knew in my head going in that I was gonna finish no matter what. First things first, follow and listen to and read from the people that inspire you. They don't even need to be ultra runners. They don't need to be anyone in the fitness space. Find those people that really resonate with you. You've heard quotes from them, you watch videos of them. You feel really drawn to how they perceive the world, how they push through, maybe how they've gotten through hardships. Make a habit out of listening to them regularly. Of course, if you know me at all, the first thing I did after I signed up for my race was read David Goggins' book, Changed My Life. I also listened to a ton of podcasts, Courtney DeWalter on Joe Rogan, David Goggins, of course, all the Joe Rogan episodes. I watched different 100 mile videos on YouTube, a lot of like cinematic artsy ones with nice music in the background. I watched people train, I watched people finish. On the other side of things, people who just started successful businesses or have a really good everyday routine, I made a habit out of watching those people. Find the things that really make you tick and really lean on them and make it a habit every single week to incorporate that content into your life. Use your training runs to practice thinking about other areas of your life, hardships, motivating things you're going through, the lows, the highs. Daydream about what it's gonna feel like to cross the finish line of 100 miles. Using all this deep thought mixed with your running itself will really prepare you for using that type of technique when things get hard on race day. Work on your confidence daily. Every single day, I want you to tell yourself out loud that you're going to finish 100 miles. It is amazing what you can do when you solidify for months on end that fact in your head, knowing you can lean on the fact that you do trust yourself to finish the race. The last thing I swear by on the mental side of preparation is strengthening the mind the way that you strengthen the body. Incorporate little moments into your week where you're twisting your mind to work a little bit harder for your body than it wants to. An example would be, you're doing a hill workout, you're halfway up the hill, you wanna stop and walk so bad. The moment you're about to stop and walk, I want you to keep running, even if it's a jog for 10 more seconds. Those little moments added up, even a few per week, change the game. It teaches you, you can do more than your body feels like it can, and that is gonna be crucial. Now guys, I'm gonna compare the 50 mile race with the 100 mile race. First things first, the planning and logistics of your 100 mile race really, really matter. Yes, things are gonna hurt, yes, you're gonna be uncomfortable, but it's gonna be made that much more enjoyable if you set yourself up to succeed. I used spreadsheets. I had so many lists of tips from people. I had everything organized with my pacers, with my crew. Everybody knew what the plan was. You wanna know when you're gonna be changing outfits, what shoes you're gonna rotate between. Do you have good socks for all different weather environments if things might change throughout the day? Most important, if you are someone who experiences blisters or chafing, do you have a plan from the get-go? Really hard to come back from a bad blister. What you can do is put a full foolproof plan in place from the beginning. Do you have tape that sticks? Do you have a way that you're gonna prevent these things from happening? Make every effort possible to stick to your original plan. You've created this plan with a lot of research, a lot of effort, and it's up to you and the people working with you, your pacers and crew, to hold tight to it. When you get tired, you won't be making normal decisions. That's when you lean on them. Keep everything moving, because the second little details start to slip off, it all falls apart quick. Fatigue was another huge difference between the 50 and 100 miler. 100 miles, you are hallucinating at some points. You are completely sleep deprived at some points because you've been up for at least a day, a lot of you. That makes it harder on your mind to push forward. I noticed that in the 50 mile run, my longest one was about 12 and a half hours in Antelope Canyon. We were in like complete loose sand. 
I still was functioning during the normal daylight hours. In the 100 miler, as things hurt and they continue to hurt, but you're forcing yourself to keep stepping forward, you're also losing mental stamina with your fatigue. So that was the biggest thing I noticed there. I'd be so, so distraught and also not really have a lot to work with in my mind, but I'd have to keep moving. Whereas the 50 miler, I knew I was gonna get through it because I was a little sharper in the mind. And to reiterate, the nutrition mattered so much more as far as planning goes for the 100 miler. I could pretty much get through anything in the 250 milers I did. Again, I was working within the normal daylight hours. I ate what was at the aid stations along with my normal spring gels and my normal electrolyte intake. I ran into things in the 100 miler I never have before, being so, so exhausted, but so nauseous that I couldn't stomach another bite. I used chicken broth, I used Coke as ways to get past that, still get the calories in. Sometimes I had to lean on protein shakes, but the best advice I got leading up to that was that you should have different food groups and categories ready to go, because you'll be wanting different things you won't really expect when you'll rotate those cravings or what you can actually stomach when you're tired. I can't stress this enough, walk early, walk often. It really matters with the 100 mile run. You have no idea what's coming, especially after that halfway mark. So be so conservative in the beginning. It really, really matters when you're gonna be moving for a full day plus. I am so excited for anyone watching this, anyone considering signing up for 100 miles. It is easily the biggest highlight of my life to this point. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm happy to do a follow-up video if we need one. If you have any other things I didn't cover here, you are gonna learn so much about yourself on the 100 mile race day. I can't even tell you. You're gonna be scraping from all sides, getting creative with motivating yourself, pushing yourself forward when you don't wanna take another step. But I believe in you, I know you can do it. Have a great one, guys. I will see you in the next video.